This book is called The Kangaroo Who Couldn't Hop by Robert Cox. Out in the bush, it was a big day for young kangaroos. It was a day that only happened once every four years, the day when all young kangaroos were taken by their mothers to meet the leader of kangaroos in Australia. His name was Big Red. Mrs Grey lined up her four new children, Jumper, Thumper, Bumper and Keith. Keith was the youngest. Mrs Grey looked at him sadly. Poor Keith, she sighed. Whatever will Big Red say? The next day, they all sat very still in front of Big Red. Mrs Grey, then Jumper, then Thumper, then Bumper and then Keith. Big Red looked up and smiled. Nice children, Mrs Grey. What do you call them? Kangaroos, replied Mrs Grey, who was rather nervous. No, no, no. Names, 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 boomed Big Red. Oh, Mrs Grey felt silly. Well, this one is Jumper, she said proudly. Big Red nodded. And this one is Thumper, she said, doubly proud. Big Red smiled. And this one along here is Bumper, she said, triply proud. Big Red beamed. And this one is, um, Keith. Big Red put his head on one side. Keith, he said. Keith, repeated Mrs Grey quietly. Big Red shook his head. No, no, no. Keith is not a kangaroo's name. Mrs Grey looked along at Keith, who was staring at the ground. It was between Hoppy and, er, uh, Keith, she murmured. We chose Keith, Mr Grey and I. Big Red's eyes opened wide and he smiled broadly. Hoppy's a good name, he exclaimed. Change it to Hoppy. Mrs Grey bit her lip and played with her lace handkerchief. But he can't, she muttered. Can't what? inquired Big Red, frowning. Mrs Grey fiddled with her pouch and shuffled a bit. Can't hop she mumbled. He just can't hop. Poor thing, he's quite hopless. And running to Keith, she flung her arms around his neck and burst into tears. Big Red put an arm around her shoulder. Come, come, Mrs Grey, he said kindly. We'll soon have Keith hopping. He's probably just a slow learner. All kangaroos can hop. You'll see. Mrs Grey shook her head sadly. No, we've tried everything, Mr Grey and I, but it's no good. Poor Keith, he's absolutely hopless. Come with me, said Big Red. So Mrs Grey, Jumper, Thumper and Bumper all hopped along behind Big Red. Keith walked. Big Red stopped and watched as Keith plodded past him. Then he nodded. Ah, yes, he exclaimed. I see the problem. No spring in his heels. He went off and came back with two old bed springs, which he tied firmly onto Keith's large back feet with string. This'll do the trick, he said. Go on, Keith, hop. Mrs Grey, jumper, Thumper and Bumper all crossed their fingers. Keith closed his eyes, gritted his teeth, clenched his paws and went Nyah! Boing! Thud! Keith fell flat on his face. Big Red shook his head. Right, it's got to be feathers. Is he ticklish? Yes, very, Mrs Grey replied. 
Jumper, Thumper and Bumper all giggled. Big Red went away and came back with five fresh emu feathers. In the distance, they could see an emu running around in circles, clutching his bottom and shouting, Out! 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 Big Red looked back at the emu. He was only too pleased to help, he said. He handed a feather each to Mrs Grey, Jumper, Thumper and Bumper. He kept the largest for himself. Right, Keith, he said. Bend over. Keith bent over and they all tickled him like mad with their feathers. Once again, Keith closed his eyes, gritted his teeth, clenched his paws and went and fell over again. He's fallen on my feather, said Jumper. And mine, moaned Thumper. He snapped mine in two, cried Bumper, looking sadly down at his limp feather. Poor Keith, said Mrs Grey with a tear in her eye. He'll always be hopless. Big Red shook his big red head. Does he like the heat, he asked. Hates it, said Mrs Grey. You'll always find him in the shade. Good, said Big Red. Hot rock. That always cures slow hoppers. Mrs Grey looked very worried. Will it hurt him? Big Red grinned at her. Not if he hops off quickly enough. That's the whole idea. This one's got to work. Even humans hop off hot rock. He pointed to a flat rock sizzling in the sun. Go on, Keith, he ordered. Up on the rock you go. Mrs Grey, Jumper, Thumper and Bumper all turned away and covered their eyes. Keith climbed onto the hot rock. Then he closed his eyes, gritted his teeth, clenched his paws and went mm -hmm. thud. They all looked up at Big Red. Did he hop? asked Mrs Grey excitedly. Fell, said Big Red sadly. Then he scratched his big red head and said, come with me please. Mrs Grey, Jumper, Thumper, Bumper and Keith all sat very still in front of Big Red as he wrote on a large piece of paper. Here you are, he said, handing the paper to Mrs Grey. Your last chance, the hospital. You'll see Dr Leap here. He'll fix Keith up all right. Dr Leap here was a hoptician. He peered into Keith's eyes. Hmm, he said, a hopless case. Mrs Grey was quite upset. Yes, I know that. That's exactly why we're here. Hmm, said Dr Leap here again, frowning. Had one before, you know. Very rare. Tail was too heavy. Absolutely hopless. Mrs Grey's eyes widened and her mouth dropped open in astonishment. Tail? Too heavy, she exclaimed. So what did you do? Dr. Leapier leaned forward and looked at Keith over his glasses. We cut a bit off, he cried, and that's what we'll do to you. Keith suddenly leapt up in the air. Boing, 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 boing. The hopless kangaroo had finally found his hop. He hopped around the room three times and then right out of the door. Boing, 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 boing. Mrs Grey jumped up and hugged the doctor. She was very affectionate. Would you have really cut a piece of his tail off? She asked. Dr Leapier looked at Mrs Grey horrified. Good heavens, no, he said. Then, with a wink, he added, but Keith didn't know that, did he, my dear? Mrs Grey smiled. And Keith? Well, he just couldn't stop hopping. Boing, 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 boing.